Hey guys, I'm uh, here to show you how I do my uh, 126 film uh, reloads. Your mileage may vary. This is how I do mine. Uh, basically, I'm using a roll of film. I can also use a bulk loader. If you have a bulk loader, you can replace the roll of film with that. Uh, my particular favorite for these is these uh, triple print color film cartridges because the film cannot be uh, normally processed anymore. So you're not wasting anything if you buy one on on the bay and uh, do it with them. Anyway, so when you get the cartridge, I might do a video on how to not break these, but when you first get the cartridge, what you want to do is you take it and crack it like this very carefully, and then you just basically pry it and pull it apart so that it comes apart like this. On a 126 film cartridge, here's what you have. You have the film goes over here, the fresh film on shot, and then you have the uh, exposed film goes over here. Now the key to, to the to my way of doing it, and I sold this uh, partially from Leslie, but uh, I've added a couple twists to mine, um, is to not tear up the paper, because the paper is important. When you unroll the paper in the dark room, now this has to be done in the dark after you shoot your film, um, you basically unroll it and then you pull the, pull the film will be right here. You pull the film off and stick it in your 35 millimeter roll, uh, developing tank and you're good but um, to reload what we're going to do and uh, this part can be done in the in the light this part here um, I take a piece of here's how I, I do this first thing I do is I take a piece go like this put this back together take just a piece of tape and I take it and place it on the end where the spool is going to go and then I so I can leave it open. I use a dark bag. I don't have a dark room. You can also put better tape on it. This is just to keep this thing together so I don't have to find different halves. And then what I've done is I take this, this here and I mark the end of where the film is going to... You need to stop spooling the film with a piece of tape. You can see that piece of tape right there. You can use any kind of tape. I just use this because it doesn't tear up the paper very much. Um, that's going to mark where the end of your film goes. So basically, you turn the lights, or you actually this part you can do in the, in the light. This makes it really much easier. See, there's where the, the film originally goes on the inside of the paper. You take your old film, you cut it so that it is even across the front. I always nip this just out of habit to make it go easier to go in and out of things because you're going to be processing this in a reel. That'll make it easier to go in the reel. And you take your roll of film, emulsion side, and then you just simply put a piece of tape. Now, I'm, I use this plastic tape because I'm very careful with my stuff. It is not the strongest tape in the world, but you don't really want the strongest tape in the world. You don't, you're not, you want to not tear up your paper. You take this. Now this can all be done in the light. Like this. And you're good to go. This part you do in the light. Now, what you do is you either turn out your lights in your dark room, or you get out your bag. And then you simply, in your bag, you have all of your stuff here. You roll this up. And then you start, this is again in the dark, you start rolling your film like this. Do, 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 do. And it'll do that, and you'll have to fiddle with it, and yada yada. I do 12s. You can do rolls of 24 if you want. Uh, 20, it gets really tight. Eh. I'll get it here. Um. It's just fiddling. I'm trying to rush. I don't want. To, I want this video to be as short as possible. I don't want to tear up my paper either. I'd rather redo the video than tear up my paper because this stuff is hard to come by. If you do it this way, it allows you to use most cameras like you're supposed to you can leave the little window in it and you can use the cameras like you're supposed to 
you know you're getting close to where it's going to stop when you run out of the run out of these holes. But after a while you do this, you get used to it. And then in the dark, you start when you run out of these holes here, you start feeling for the tape. There's my tape. You can feel that edge in the dark. That's where you're going to cut this. So you go like this, and you either cut that, or if you forgot to put your scissors in there, you I always cut it a little long. Just make sure you don't cut your paper, because that's a bummer. And you, then all you do is you have to reverse the process. And this is where you have to be careful, because you don't want to fingerprint up your film. So you just start rolling the other way, because remember, this side has to fit over here. And you reverse the process. There's your film. Now this is in the dark. So you have to catch the film up in this little bitty tiny roll. And once you get started, you just keep it even. Keep it tight because you want it to be as tight as possible. You're just going to take this roll and go the other way. You can see you've got the little uh, 35 millimeter sprockets. That's kind of an issue. Uh, some cameras catch on those, but usually you can fight your way through it. There are some cameras where you can hold down the shutter button and just move on to the next, and then after you've wound the film, you can just release the shutter button. Let's get this, try to get this done as quickly as I can without messing it up. You want to make this roll as tight as you can. There, my, there's my bump. So my film is gone. Now I'm going to... When you reach that hole, you know you're there. You take this, you place it in... Or container. Just take your time, don't be in any hurry, and it'll close right up. Now what I do is once I got that done, I can relax, just grab a big ass piece of tape. And I wrap it all the way around. Alrighty. Now you can, depending on this, your roll, you can Go ahead and, and seal it up better on the sides. I generally don't. I just generally take that and put that right in the camera. Now it's going to be ready to roll. Um, one thing else you can do, you can also remove, it's hard to see, so you can remove that little piece right there and you can um, get uh, sprockets on both sides by doing that. I don't because my 500 uh, my Kodak 500 doesn't like it if you, it's not got that piece of plastic in there, so I leave it in there. That's pretty much how you do it. Thanks, and have a good one.